Good afternoon, Professor Kornfeld and class. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lydia Ramirez and I'm currently a student here at San Diego State. First things first, I just wanted to thank you all for your time and cooperation regarding my situation this semester. I know it's not the most conventional arrangement, but I am very thankful for you all and I appreciate your time and understanding. For my presentation today, I will be discussing post-colonial intellectual Miss Nadine Gordimer. It is my goal within the next 10 minutes to discuss one, a little background of Nadine Gordimer, to provide a quick history of the apartheid system within South Africa, three, discuss how Gordimer's work impacted South African society during this time, specifically how her work correlated with existing social anxieties, and four, lasting impressions of Gordimer's work even to this day. Throughout this video, I'll be covering a variety of topics, so should you have any questions or concerns, or if I get something wrong, please feel free to ask at the end. Thank you so much. Nadine Gordimer lived from November 1923 to July 2014. Born in South Africa, she is primarily known for her work as a writer, political activist, and Nobel Prize winner for her contributions in literature. It has been reported that from an early age, Gordimer had already been exposed to the realities of segregation and discrimination in South Africa. Her father, who had faced religious discrimination, was a refugee from Lithuania, and her mother, interestingly, was deeply committed in fighting against the racial and economic struggle in their community. It is safe to assume that both her parents, as well as the worsening conditions in their country, led to Gordimer's interest in fighting against the injustice. During her early years, Cordomer also discovered she had a passion, a gift really for writing. As early as 13 years old, Cordomer published her first short story for both children and young adults, creating works such as The Quest for Seen Gold and Come Again Tomorrow. Evolving from short stories, Gordimer would continue to use her writing skills to discuss pressing issues regarding her community. It is estimated that up until her death, Gordimer would write over 50 plus works, literary works to include novels, essays, and of course, short stories. Interesting, what makes Gordimer so unique in her writing is that she primarily focuses on issues facing the South African community, issues such as the apartheid system, racism, social inequalities, excuse me, and Exploring how these issues are impacting the people within her beloved South Africa. To better understand Nadine Gordimer and her work, we must first look back into the social and racial issues during this time, looking most specifically at the apartheid system. The rise in the apartheid system during the late 1940s is most certainly a complex phenomenon. Stemming from Dutch and English colonization spanning nearly three centuries, we can analyze how this form of institutional racism came about. So from approximately the early 1600s to early 1900s, white Anglo, Dutch, and English settlers had settled in South African region. Similar to the United States, this colonization or establishment of dominating nations systematically created a form of a master and slave or superior and inferior relationship between the foreign settlers and the indigenous people. Limited by wealth, weapons, you know, or power, the native South Africans would endure a slow trend of racism. It wasn't until the unification of South Africa in 1910 that really enforced, um, as I mentioned previously, this, this wider black you know, inferior or, or superior classification in South Africa. No longer were these competing nations in the region um, separated, but now they were united under one South Africa, and it, it enabled this racial superiority between those of color and those who were not. 
It was then with the election of the National Party that spearheaded systematic racism. In 1948, the Afrikaner National Party, essentially those of Dutch descent, won the general election and began to apply their policy of apartheid. Apartheid, translating literally to separateness, was a system of institutional racial segregation in South Africa from 1948 to the early 1990s. Similar to the United States with the Southern Jim Crow laws, these new laws were centralized on the ideas of a separate society. Appallingly, the apartheid engulfed every aspect of society from school, work, social life. Literally every part of daily life was influenced by this mandated separation. With these unfair changes, of course, there was much resistance against these new laws in no particular order, and of course, there are more. These are just some of the political resistance strategies South Africans attempted to revert the apartheid. There was the Defiance Campaign, you know, a political mobilization. There was the Pan-African Congress, an organization against past laws in South Africa, essentially laws that limited um, black South Africans in society. And also there was the Sharpville Massacre. It was initially a public demonstration against the apartheid, but unfortunately it escalated racial tensions with the deaths of several participants. Along with public movements, there are also many public figures that were not afraid to oppose the apartheid in South Africa. Political activists to include, but not limited to, Nelson Mandela, Albertina Sisulu, religious figure Desmond Tutu, what I found interesting researching these figures is that regardless of field or specialty, resistance and public activism was seen throughout the community. Other members to include Helen Joseph, she helped organize thousands of women to march against the apartheid. Steve Biko, he spearheaded the black consciousness movement. And of course, our leading lady, Nadine Gordimer, a prominent writer and political activist. What I feel what makes Nadine Gordimer so unique during this time is that she explored the effects of the apartheid in South Africa in her own literary works. So like, for example, her most notable works, World of Strangers, The Conservationist, July's People, Burger's Daughter, and A Sport of Nature, all in some way deal with uneasy times within her country. Without giving too much away about the text, Gordimer's 1974 book, The Conservationist, explores the struggles of a man, um, but later, you know, conveys a higher um, meaning, you know, within the text. For example, there's a rich white business owner who purchases a farm, but has no previous knowledge of how to tend to it. So only from the work of his black servants is the land able to be tended to. So regardless of his desire to have this beautiful land, you know, there's a flood and it just destroys um, much of his property. And then also during this time, the, the white landowner is haunted uh, by just situations that's going on. So in Gordimer's book, you know, you can kind of tell this direct correlation of the white rich businessman having, you know, no right to this South African land because he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how to tend to it. But it essentially it's because of his wealth and status that he's able to control much of the area similar to that much of what's going on in South Africa at, at this time. You know, the rich white um, people within South Africa are controlling much and the inferior, if you will, um, black um, members of the country are basically servants tending to these white non-natives. Another example of Gordimer's work in relation to South African issues can be seen in her 1981 novel, July's People. The novel is set in future South African society where the black population has essentially taken over and this has resulted in widespread violence in order to overturn the apartheid system. Uh, throughout the novel, there's a variety of themes and symbols. For example, um, where race is seen as a form of power. Uh, Gordimer exposes, you know, white South African liberalism in South Africa at this time, you know, or um, white South Africans who say they are anti-apartheid, but in some way, you know, systematically, they're still enforcing this policy of, of treating um, blacks in the area as inferior and, and them superior. So just from perusing several of her works, it is evident that Gordimer beautifully incorporates the morals and psychological turmoils of her racially divided country uh, into, you know, a, for, a literary masterpiece. These are just two books, but other works um, include themes of politics, role reversal, and themes of freedom, changing relationships, and of course, many more. 
with escalating relations, Nadine Gordimer became more involved in the anti-apartheid movement. Being close friends with fellow activists Betty Duto and Nelson Mandela, Gordimer would later play a crucial role in helping Mandela in his famous 1964 speech, I am prepared to die. Interestingly, they would later become good friends in the years to come. Gordimer would continue to challenge the apartheid system within her literary work, although Gordimer had commented years later that, quote, I am not a political person by nature, Gordimer reflects that, quote, I do not suppose if I had lived elsewhere, my writing would have reflected much, if at at all. Clearly, although not a political person, Gordimer could not ignore the injustices that surrounded her. After decades of struggle, the apartheid system ended with the election of the new ruling party, the African National Congress, ANC. On May 10, 1994, Nelson Mandela was sworn in as South Africa's president. Interestingly, that same year, a new South African flag was introduced to represent a new democracy after the end of apartheid. Throughout the 20th century, Gordimer's work attracted much attention from both South African and international readers. It is without a doubt that those who were curious enough to read about the conditions in South Africa somehow experienced through Gordimer's writing the brutal realities of South African peoples. Few New York Times critics state that Gordimer's books are, quote, rich with terror in that the readers are able to experience a brief illusion of social history. In conclusion, what I personally admire about Nadine Gordimer is that she did not intentionally set out to write about the situations around her. She had commented numerous times that she had never set out to be political, but in some way, she just wrote about what she thought was right. Writing about the horrors within her society, challenging the norms, ignoring the threats of being imprisoned or attacked, the fact uh, that she was willing to take these challenges because of her beliefs, you know, to expose to the rest of the world what was going on in her South Africa is an amazing accomplishment that, you know, should be celebrated even to this day.